Yeah, so I'm Stephen DeLorme. I'm a designer, um, and I wanted to talk today about some of the kind of UX and UI implications of Taproot. Um, so, uh, but the basic gist is that uh, we're a community of designers, creatives, artists, you know, product managers, builders who kind of want to improve the user experience of Bitcoin. Um, so there's a lot of projects that uh, we work on together. Um, you know, uh, probably our most important flagship product is the Bitcoin Design Guide. So these are sort of uh, user experience principles for Bitcoin. Um, you can just find it on the Bitcoin.design website. And, uh, you know, there's like prototypes, reference designs, as we call them, um, for Bitcoin products. Um, the kind of idea is the same way that you, uh, you know, don't want to write the same code twice. You want to, in the engineering world, want to reuse a code library. Um, you know, that's been well vetted, well tested. Well, the same thing works with design patterns too. Like, do you really want to reinvent the wheel? Let's use kind of like, uh, kind of hit users for a bit, like kind of peer reviewed, kind of vetted design patterns um, for your products. Uh, Cause we want, you know, if it's Bitcoin's going to be the best money, it should have the best user experience as well. Uh, there's also other, other projects like the Bitcoin UI kit, which are Figma uh, templates that you can kind of take and run with um, to start uh, building out the design of your Bitcoin products user interface. Bitcoin icons kit. And then we also have a lot of collaborations in the community where wallet projects will come in, want to get help with something they're working on. And, uh, you know, designers will join their projects. So Zeus, uh, Albi, uh, Bitcoin Core, uh, the UI redesign. These are all examples of, of good, you know, collaborations that are going on with the design community. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> had a lot of good kind of technical discussion today um, about how to do things with Taproot. I thought, you know, for a user experience discussion, we should zoom out a little bit and just kind of like look at, um, you know, why it is that we're even here talking about Taproot to begin with. Uh, you know, so you have smaller transaction size. If anyone hasn't seen this, you can go to mempool.space and, you know, search, type in BC1Q into the search field and then see what the witness looks like. And then type in BC1P into the search field, choose a random address and see how much smaller the witness is. So smaller transaction sizes, why do users care? They don't. But... They do care about lower transaction fees and smaller transaction sizes, lower transaction fees. Um, you know, another one of these advantages, single signature and multi-signature look similar. Users don't care about this. But what they do care about is that that could mean better privacy. Um, and then, you know, more powerful scripting. There's all these things we can do with uh, the, the, tap, the tap, you know, root tree structure. Um, it's a lot, you know, very powerful. And again, to a user, that doesn't mean anything. But I think that looking into the future, we just have to think about using our imagination for, you know, building products that are actually meeting people's needs um, and all of that. So, yeah, you know, sometimes you'll hear these these complaints. People say that, like, well, well, no one, you know, the market didn't ask for Taproot. Nobody was asking for Taproot. And, and to some degree, that's true. But what they were asking for is, you know, lower fees. They were asking for better privacy. They were asking for more functionality. And Taproot helps us to deliver the, you know, all of those things. So we just have to remember that, that that's ultimately what we're you know trying to build here for people who use Bitcoin. So I think kind of like the the most important um, you know taproot like projects uh, taproot project that you know wallets and uh, Bitcoin companies can get involved in is, with at the moment is really just adding support for taproot to their existing wallets or exchanges or whatever. So you know kind of like low hanging fruit for that I think is adding send support. Um, there's a really good website or a page on the Bitcoin wiki. I think it's like Bitcoin.it or whatever. Uh, but there's a good page on there that tracks uh, uh, adoption of BEC32 and BEC32M, uh, basically the you know address format Taproot uses. So you can go and see all the, the wallets and websites that do and don't support it. And far more are supporting sending right now. Um, I think because uh, I think, uh, you know, engineers, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all you really have to do for that is just add in some kind of address validation, make sure that um, it's a valid address before you send it. So you're kind of you're kind of good to go there. So that's a little hanging fruit. Um, but if you haven't added support yet, I mean, I do hope that your app has some kind of, you know, ability, some kind of uh, way to teach the user uh, about um, what you expect from them if you don't support Taproot already. So this is just an example I pulled from the Bitcoin UI kit. This payment format is not supported. And then you can have a link there that, you know, could pull up another window that kind of gives the user a better idea of what they actually can, you know, scan with your app and get it to, to function. Um, you know, uh, this was me just kind of brainstorming about what uh, a product might do if they did, you know, drop uh, sending to Taproot address support tomorrow. You know, the user might go to their home screen. And, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, for those of us that follow the development side of this, our initial instincts might actually be to make a big deal out of it. 
and say, whoa, Taproot sent to here. You can now send a Taproot address. It's the latest and greatest you know, improvement. And um, I would actually not suggest that because I, I, I got to thinking about that. I was like, well, you know, do we really want to make a big deal out of it? Really, what this is, is this is kind of an under the hood compatibility thing. And really, almost maybe, maybe the user doesn't even need to know about this at all. Uh, you know, it's just that their wallet is just suddenly become more compatible. And, um, you know, we, we don't really need to go into all the gory details about that. So I actually toned that back down a lot. We can just scrap that one. I did this one. Just, you know, you can imagine a, a generic um, every time, you know, uh, the, the software updates that get a little notification. Boom, you're on the latest version. And, you know, for transparency, you have a change log and, you know, users that really care about these these details can look at the change log and we can mention that it supports Taproot, but we don't need to, you know, make a big deal out of it, uh, really, in, in that regard. The bigger deal, I think, is the receive support. And this is the one that I think is uh, a little bit harder. Um, you see on the, uh, you know, Bitcoin wiki that uh, a lot more wallets are kind of dragging their feet on adding this support. Um, so, you know, you basically, you need to add it, you know, upgrade it so that it can generate the, P, the pay to tap root addresses. Uh, you got to leave in the ability to generate the native segue addresses and really kind of like a design decision you need to make is does your wallet default to taproot or does it still default to segwit? Is like, is taproot this kind of, you know, bleeding edge feature that the user has to enable or do you just kind of, um, you know, force them to use it? Um, so this was me taking again assets from the UI kit and kind of mocking up some, some taproot ideas here. So. Uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, they go to their request page and this just, just for the sake of, you know, simplicity here, I'm going to assume this is not a lightning wallet. This is just, you know, a, a typical on-chain wallet. And, uh, you know, they, they've gone to the request screen by default. It's generated a paid to tap root address over there. And, you know, there's a little settings tab and they can pop that open and get to the settings. And there's this thing that says address type. And if they tap it, then it will give them a menu. And it's like taproot recommended more private lower fees segwit widely supported legacy most widely supported higher fees we kind of put it at the bottom and like discourage that type so if they wanted to they could still go in and choose choose segwit if they needed to and then they would you know switch the qr code um right over there uh yeah you all can read qr codes right you can tell that's a different qr code right uh, <laughs> And then, uh, you know, I got to thinking, like, maybe that would actually be annoying. So, like, if, I guess if we go back to this real quick, like, this is kind of uh, a wallet that's kind of taking a strong stance on Taproot. They're like, look, uh, you know, we need to get the ecosystem on Taproot. We need to make Bitcoin more private. Uh, we're not, you know, everybody needs to be pushing for Taproot. So we're going to kind of default our users to Taproot. Um, and so they're kind of taking a stance on that. Well... There's going to be this interim kind of messy period where, you know, other wallets don't support it. And um, that's, that, that's going to be messy. So, uh, you know, maybe one way you could kind of redesign the other flow quicker is I've got, you know, this kind of like little carousel here. Um, you know, it's probably a design pattern people are used to seeing now where you just have, you know, some little indicators at the bottom of the screen and you can kind of swipe through it. And I've got a taproot address by default, but then I can just swipe over and turn it into a SegWit address. And then I got to thinking, well, like, they look so similar. Like, is the user going to even notice the difference? Are they going to, uh, like, are, are they going to understand? So I just put a little note there that says, SegWit address, use this address format if the, if the sender can't use the format on the previous screen. So just, just to let them know that, hey, this one is okay. You, you can use this one. Um, you know, you use the other one first, but if they can't support it, then use that one. Um, so that would, that's a, you know, basic, basic kind of receive flow. And, I think if you're going to make, like, if you want to roll out Taproot receive support tomorrow and you, um, you know, you, you're not going to make Taproot the default, I, I tend to think you could get away with just kind of not even telling anybody it's there. Um, only the hardcore Bitcoin engineers really need to think about it. But if you are going to make Taproot the default, I think you kind of need to explain yourself to the user. You need to, you know, make sure that they know about the new app behavior. And especially if, um, your app involves like updating the backup, because um, you know, like one interesting discussion, like Steve and I were having this morning is about like, um, if you roll out a different wallet, like if you roll out Taproot support to an existing wallet, um, it's like, are you going to ask them to create a new Taproot wallet? Or are you going to try and use their existing private key and just derive Taproot, uh, pay to Taproot addresses from that? And there might be additional data that needs to go into their backroot uh, and, or into their backup. So maybe that's a different derivation path you decided to use for Taproot. Or, uh, you know, maybe it needs to be uh, like a taproot, uh, you need like a descriptor 
for that so that it can be backed up and restored easier. So let's think about that. So this is like, you know, maybe a hypothetical onboarding flow. And uh, when, you know, they, they, uh, their app automatically down uh, updates from the app store. So the next time they open it, you know, it, it lets them know about the upgrade. Hey, your wallet just got a major upgrade. We added support for Taproot, which is the latest Bitcoin upgrade. Learn about what Taproot can do for you. Swipe over, more privacy. This new upgrade makes addresses look more, look more similar. That means an extra layer of privacy for everyone using Bitcoin. Then lower fees. This upgrade makes your transactions take up less space, resulting in lower fees you pay when sending Bitcoin. Let's back up your wallet. Now that your wallet supports Taproot, you'll need to update your wallet backup. We'll guide you through that. And like, you know, this next process is going to look different depending on what you're doing. I think that for kind of smaller amounts of Bitcoin, I'd personally recommend an automatic cloud backup. And I know that, um, you know, for very security conscious people, that might make you cringe a little bit about, you know, kind of putting private keys on the cloud. Um, it, it should. But, you know, I think that you can come up with encryption schemes to protect keys on the cloud. Um, you know, I think Casa has done a really good job of that. Um, you know, a lot of uh, like Phoenix, I think, uh, will let you do that. A lot, a lot of different wallets will let you kind of encrypt your key and it could just go to Google Drive or iCloud. And for smaller amounts of money, that may be a perfectly valid security model. So if you're using that, you could totally just jam some, you know, taproot descriptors or whatever into the automatic uh, cloud backup. And that would probably work. But for wallets that do have a manual backup, you are going to need to have them, uh, you know, re record some additional data. Because if you want it to be interoperable with other wallets in the future, you need to know how to be able to generate, regenerate that taproot wallet. So this is just a mock-up of a like kind of a wallet backup template. And, you know, the idea for this could be like uh, this descriptor, by the way, is probably wrong. I'm sorry. I'm a designer. Uh, but, you know, the, the basic gist is like maybe you have this template for your product that gets automatically generated and, uh, you know, certain less sensitive things uh, you could uh, kind of bake into the template. Um, so this could be a PDF file that they download. Maybe they print it out if they want. Maybe they just, you know, keep it on whatever device they want. Um, but, you know, the, the kind of stuff like the derivation path and fingerprints and just other less set and like, you know, some descriptors with like X pubs or something in them. That's less sensitive. That's not going to let you steal funds, right? So you could bake that stuff into the template um, and then leave the recovery phrase empty so that they can like write that in themselves. So that's, that's one example. You know, Moon. Um, you know, I, I wish I could say like invented, you know, this whole idea, but this is really a collaboration of a lot of people in the design community and also stuff we're seeing from other projects. Moon did this. I was, um, I was uh, at the conference in El Salvador last year when, uh, you know, uh, Taproot activated and suddenly the next time I opened my Moon wallet, you know, they, they already had support like roll, you know, ready to go. And so, you know, they come up with this kind of, uh, it looks very much like an onboarding flow and they kind of sell the value proposition of it. but they say, you know, we have to, we have to give you a new backup. Uh, so, you know, I have to go and update my emergency kit, which you kind of saved to your cloud for this one. And uh, then it lets you verify. And it's kind of this PDF file you can look at. And basically, they're just jamming taproot descriptors into it. Um, but for, for the way that their backup system works, that's it, it kind of relies on that. Um, but yeah, that basically introduced it. And now they're defaulting to taproot. Um, so they kind of they took a stance on it. They I think they they wanted to support Taproot and uh, get people more people using it. So that's cool. So you know the the decisions you make for your Bitcoin product might be a little bit different than the ones that they make. You know you kind of have to decide you know for your users what is best. Um, but that's just kind of um, you know hopefully this helps kind of you know helps you think about this a little bit more critically um, as you start to roll out Taproot support. So um, you know just some kind of fun stuff. I think. Um, you know, uh, that, that, that's like the, that's what we need to be working on now. Maybe in the future, where else could designers help? Like, uh, you know, there's this MuSig2 Frost thing. So threshold signatures and multi-sig, I guess, because we can't use multi-sig to talk about M of N anymore. Um, I, I just, I, I, I'd like to learn more about these personally because I'm, I'm curious to know if it's going to kind of change the methodology um, by which, uh, you know, users interact uh, with multi-sig and threshold wallet. So, I, I, I'm just curious about that personally so that we can, um, you know, see what design patterns need to evolve around that. There's this coin swap thing. Uh, I'm, hopefully, I'm going to learn more about that soon, too. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to use Taproot in some clever ways to improve privacy. Um, so I think that we'll need some kind of design patterns around that. And then, you know, I listed Terror here, but uh, I, I'm really just using that as a placeholder fold, for like whatever when people whatever people build on Taproot. People are always talking about, well, Taproot enables more smart contracts and crazy stuff. So it's like, 
we don't really know what you know people are going to build with Taproot over the next ten years or so. But whatever it is, if it if it gets as wild as people act like it's going to get, then we're going to need some some design love in there as well. So um, that's that's basically um, what I got for you. Um, on my website there, I blog about Bitcoin and design, d.elor.me. Uh, you're probably going to forget it. I thought I was clever when I did the top level domain hack, but it just nobody remembers it. And I'm Stephen Lim on Twitter. Um, but that's, that's, that's the basic gist. So, um, yeah, I don't know how much time I left, but I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has any. And otherwise, we're good to go. Yeah, that's a really good question. He asked, like, how would you know if, if, if somebody scanned this one over here and it failed, it's going to fail on the other person's screen. How would you know to go to that one if you had it before? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, my, my, my kind of the first thing that pops in my mind is, um, you know, kind of how like we had this onboarding process that like lets people know, hey, Taproot is here now. Um, maybe you could have now the next time they hit this screen. Um, where this new like swipeable address format is, maybe you know you kind of dim the screen a little bit and pop up with like a little indicator that's like, hey, just to let you know, there's this other address format here. So if people sometimes scan and it doesn't work. You can swipe there. So I would probably just call their attention to it visually the next time they're on there. Um, so that that would be one way of doing it. Yeah. I, so now I'm just rambling. I do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. No, I think you're right. Because and, and that's like, I mean, part of it is that like, I think the address format for Bitcoin just like looks very intimidating to most people. And I think most people just don't notice it. But if you take the time to actually like format the address, like properly, like what I tried to do here was like space it out, like, you know, every four characters, I'd put a space in between them. And so and you know, you can imagine if you like scaled that font size up and made it bigger, then it would be very, very apparent. If you wanted to go even crazier with it, you could like color code it. You could be like, okay, in my in my my wallet brand world, like you know, Taproot is green and Segwit is red, and so you know, you always make the ad address for the BC1Q red and the BC1P green. So I think if you if you just think about the, your typography a little bit, you can call attention to that a little bit, and people might remember that. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's a good question. So he's asking, like, why, why give them a choice if Taproot is better? I mean, I think about it in a couple different ways. I mean, I, I think, like, yeah, moving forward, like five years from now, if you're building a brand new Bitcoin wallet, I would imagine that it would, you know, you would want it to be Taproot only, like the same way that, like, if a Bitcoin wallet was released last year, I would find it weird if they were still using addresses that began with a one, right? Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that at some point you have to make an opinionated stance and just be like, Taproot is the way to go. Um, I think in the interim where we have this messy period is that like, if not all the wallets support it yet and your wallet only supports Taproot, um, like you can only receive to Taproot and then suddenly does that cut you off from the rest of the ecosystem? Like, do all these people can't, can they just not send you Bitcoin now because your wallet can't generate a SegWit address? Or similarly, like, again, like to what I was talking about earlier, it's like, what if it's an existing wallet you're trying to add Taproot to support to and they, 
they already have these SegWit addresses. I guess to, to your point, though, you could say for that while, okay, it's not generating any more SegWit addresses. It's, you, know, you, you, you spend your, your SegWit UTXOs, but we're not generating any more SegWit addresses. But um, so that, that could be one approach to take. But I think my, my main thing is just the compatibility. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to uh, cut anybody else off from receiving Bitcoin from somebody else. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you shouldn't you shouldn't intimidate people with the option. So I guess, you know, my hope with this one here is that most people never make it into that screen. Because like they like in, in, in the majority of situations, they say, OK, send me the Bitcoin and they just hold up this QR code on this screen here and they never they never get past it. Um, I, I envisioned like the rest of this as being for like, um, OK, that didn't work or OK, I'm an advanced user or I feel like I'm an advanced user and want to learn more. Then they boop. And then, oh, what happens if I fiddle with this stuff? You know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you're right. Absolutely, you shouldn't. I think that I, I think that it's be better to err on the side of simplicity, especially for non-technical users, and just like stick with something like that. Mm. Now, I hope it's okay if I mention this. You mentioned that thing to me earlier, Steve, about the the um, uh, what if we set up Bitcoin wallets so that anytime you uh, spent, uh, you made a transaction, the change output, like if it's say it's a SegWit wallet. The change outputs go to um, uh, to uh, taproot outputs. Would that be a privacy concern? You think? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that would, that would be, that would be totally cool if wallets started doing that, I think. Then, yeah, you, then you would just, you know, be putting people on taproot and moving them over to better, better privacy practices without having to bother them about it, I think. Yeah, and we've also there's also been like in you know the Bit Twenty One land, we've been you know experimenting with the, the on chain address with a Lightning invoice crammed into a parameter. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be a good. Yeah, it's like it's that's 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 the that's like the the problem. That's like the 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 multiple formats is such a an issue in Bitcoin. The payment for, format requests. I mean, we just have like pages and pages in the Bitcoin Design Guide. One page entirely to on-chain formats, and one page entirely to Lightning formats. And it it just you know it's like every time you talk about it, you know somebody pastes the XKCD comic into the chat. Half the time it's me, half the time it's somebody else. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's madness. And then it's like, so it's like at a certain point, it's like, well, do we come up with complicated ways of like trying to make all these formats interoperable? Or do we just like, you know, in this case with Taproot, it, it might just be easier to just like really campaign and rally, you know, our favorite wallet projects to add Taproot, receive support, and just like have a big GitHub issue that, you know, tracks it kind of like Uncle Rockstar did for a uppercase back 32 m for BTC pay server, just like have a big issue that tracks who supports what. And when they don't support it, it's like open an issue with them, open an issue, start a discussion, whatever. And then just like, you're right. 
a library. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I think that it's like, you know, I, SegWit was, I remember cutting edge and new for a while there. And then like, kind of like I woke up and five years had passed and like every while it was generating BC1 queue addresses. So I get it. But yeah, but the majority of them I feel like are so, I, I mean, hopefully it'll be messy and will take a long time, but I'm hoping that, yeah, we'll, we'll get to a place where there's widespread support, so. Well, cool. Anything else? Or are we? Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much.